welcome back again today we are trying to totally discover what leads to cyclization since we have the help of models probably you can participate and discover on your own what factors make cyclization possible earlier classes we did talk about conformers if you remember what are conformers just to refresh your memory the c single bond c rotation is energetically a feasible process it doesn't require a lot of energy if they keep moving continuously we identified the uh, relative locations of hydrogen atoms on adjacent carbon atoms will change bond lengths are intact everything is intact only the relative locations of hydrogens are changing if they are one behind they are like this they may change now if they are one behind the other that means they are normally called as eclipsed as you are aware of and the distance between hydrogen atoms is quite close up suppose if they are slightly staggered non eclipsed the bond distance has increased what is the bond distance i am referring to the electron clouds of ch and ch bond they are slightly moving away the energy difference may be less in some cases more in certain other cases but there is an energy difference so i am again bringing back to discussion conformers second point you must retain in mind is it is always between adjacent carbon atoms only therefore if i take this uh, n butane molecule if you remember n butane molecule first of all how do you recognize that there are four black spheres therefore it is butane this is ch3 what i am holding right now is ch2 here correct and there is one more ch2 and ch3 both some this proportion is replicated here so i have ch3 ch2 ch2 and ch3 this is my n butane molecule let us see how conformers the topic of our focus today is coming into this thing here discussion here if you watch out the first carbon what i am holding is first carbon here i am going for eclipse to start with yeah if you are carefully following i think you can i am keeping exactly in front of me so that you can see that these two which i am holding they are one behind the other that must be same for the remaining hydrogens also now they are eclipsed now i'll shift the focus from first to second between second and third i want to talk now i am focusing on the second and third now second and third hope it's clear for you they are eclipsed now i will go for third and so called fourth carbon again they are eclipsed hope you are following it if it is staggered you can see all the hydrogens right now my interest is not that so again i am going for eclipsed conformation for all of them this is one eclipse form hope you can see this these are one behind the other they are one behind the other they are one behind the other i repeat these are one behind the other this is one and second carbon if i move like this i think the second and third hydrogen positions if i move like this i think this is last third and fourth entire configuration is either conformer corresponds to eclipse now i'm keeping it like this for you to observe much better are you watching something very very fascinating here it is very close to cyclization the so called terminal carbons that is in the case of cyclobutane it is c1 and c4 now they are very close to each other we are not compelling them in the eclipse conformation they are bound to come close to each other if that is the case there is a scope of cyclization involving this and this carbon atom then hold it here this and this carbon atom then refer to they will lead to cyclization let us implement that idea as it is happening in nature i will reform one of the bonds here i take it off and reform that bond i am actually struggling here but still it can form yeah i got it i got the cyclobutane form hope you are able to see that i am holding with one of it it is this square shape cyclobutane there are four carbons in eight hydrogens that is white spheres are 8 in number now once it has cyclized are you watching what the tragic thing it cannot go any longer for staggered form but what is the choice of the molecule to go for staggered form if possible 
in this case it is difficult is it not there is some strain in the molecule they are strain torsional later on i'll use the technical word for that first depreciate as it must be by absorption only secondly the carbon is forming four bonds even now if it is four bonded recollect it is sp3 hybridization the bond angle should be 109 but as per this geometry it is 90 closer to 90 let me put it that way that means there is a strain in the angle i don't think molecule really appreciates this therefore cyclobutane must be unstable or less stable if that is the case think of higher options rather than lower options what is the lower option here if this is true for four member three member it must be still more worse suppose if i want to move one of them probably to some extent i can do make make it slightly staggered slightly staggered but not much of improvisation please suppose if i had one more carbon let me now do that i am again breaking and reforming the bond here right and i will take one carbon and reform the bond here is one more carbon i am taking here i will form a bond here yeah now i need not show again already we have proved only eclipsed form eclipsed conformer leads to cyclization so i'll directly lead a cyclic form here now this is cyclopentane directly you can see this two are one behind the other this two what i'm holding this two are one behind the other and everything cyclopentane hope oh, i am visible also in that cyclopentane ring this is cyclopentane now watch out is there a scope for some staggered form because cyclic system itself means some restriction has come in the movement now suppose if i want to move i think slightly this is moving upward on one carbon this is an extra carbon over and above what we got for cyclobutane suppose if this is moving means probably a yes, molecule is must be quite happy if i am moving up are you watching out something very interesting here focus on this carbon i am rotating in that case are you watching out this hydrogen is visible this is the carbon in the middle this hydrogen is visible that means this particular area this carbon this carbon and what is in front of you this particular area of the pentagon has become staggered so in spite of cyclization molecule can go for staggered form also now what is the natural preference for the molecule staggered form only in spite of cyclization that's what is achieved in that case some of you must be really failing can't we try for six member yes that's a good suggestion thank you we shall try with the six carbon and also i'm breaking again forming that bond please try to follow that this one more carbon atom i'm taking here let me form a bond here so that i get cyclohexene and here is the molecule i'm leaving again as i told you again i'm not showing both the alternatives directly because already we proved it is the eclipsed form that leads to cyclization i took it and i'm forming it and this is the cyclohexene form a perfect hexagon just looking like honeycomb type of structure and all hydrogens are we can make it out they are one behind the other they are one behind the other beautiful structure but as i told you it may be beautiful for us to look at but molecule does not appreciate our aesthetic sense here it wants a staggered form for energy considerations the favorite conformer is what staggered now see what i am doing here i am holding this oppositely positioned carbons and i can move up and down are you watching out moving down and i am moving up and i am moving down or simultaneously one is moving up other is moving down many operations i am able to do i hope you are able to follow what i am talking there the center thing is moving in the process of movement middle carbons by and large remain untouched so what i will do is i am getting the clue from the model i will again show in front of you the hexagon and i am keeping my hand like this hand in front of you and this carbon which is on toward this side i will move down this carbon i will move up earlier i was carrying out many conformations rapidly now i am showing one of them slowly and then freeze at that point frozen shot and watch out what is the type of uh, structure i am getting here now if you follow this carbon is up this was somewhat what we observed even for 
cyclopentane that was not having this extra carbon. I repeat that point here, watch out carefully. This portion, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This portion is staggered. Similarly, we have one more portion here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This is also staggered. So, I am placing my hand like this. Are four carbons in one plane, please? Can you see this carbon is slightly projecting up? And this one moving down? So, just go back. In the case of cyclopentane, this was not there. Therefore, only this part was staggered. That's what he told you. Suppose if I still go back, cyclobutane, neither this was there nor this was there. Entire thing is only one, four. It is coming in one plane. Eclipsed. Now, because having this extra carbon, and it's one more extra carbon, we are having some advantages. The conformations are very flexible now. Because of this carbon, as an extension of cyclopentane, I said, this portion is staggered. Now, one more has come in cyclohexane. So, even this portion is staggered. Entire molecule is now staggered. Compound. Staggered. Compound. Beautiful. For reasons, for better visualization, we call this form where one carbon is up, other is down, remaining four carbons are in one plane. It is normally called as chair form. Don't take the example literally. It has some apparent resemblance to a chair form. Otherwise, we shall not stretch out that argument here. Now, this chair form is extremely interesting. You must understand this at this stage because once we go to carbohydrate chemistry, our exos molecules, that is monosaccharides, ring system, like glucose, other things here, they go for exactly chair form. Even five member rings are available. We call them as furanose ring systems. Once you are very clear about this, that area of biochemistry becomes very fascinating. Now, one more point I need to add here so that you are very clear about the chair form here. I will focus on chair form only now to start with. Suppose imagine I am focusing on this carbon, which I am pointing out. Can you see, apart from bonded to carbons here, are you watching it is bonded to two hydrogens? Now, how are they oriented here? This carbon, this hydrogen is a straight line bond. This is slant, slant. Straight line bond is called as a axial bond. A X I A L. Abbreviated as A bond, small a. This is a A bond. This is called a slant line is technically called as equatorial line, equatorial, abbreviated as E bond. So we have on every carbon in this configuration, one E bond and one A bond. That is, we cannot expect any representation which is closer to reality as both A bonds or both E bonds. Incorrect. Why I am making this point is, in the Havert projection that you will encounter, Havert projection, we have both axial bonds, which is incorrect. This is better. This confirmation structure is really good. Now, if this is one bond down, one bond slightly up. Now, what is the environment in the next carbon atom? This is the next carbon atom I'm referring to. Next carbon atom. Are you watching what if this axial bond is down? I'm holding. This axial bond is up. I'm holding both of them. As I told you, each carbon must have one A bond and one E bond. If this A bond is down, on the next carbon, that must be up. If this E bond is slightly up, I will hold that now. If this E bond is slightly up, the other E bond, I am going to show you, the other E bond, are you watching it? Must be slightly down. Do you understand I am talking again about a staggered conformer? But for staggered conformation, we cannot have that kind of arrangement. Therefore, every carbon has one A bond and one E bond. On the adjacent carbon, also same situation. But the direction is changed. If on one carbon, if the A bond is down, on the adjacent carbons, A bond will be up. If on a given carbon focused atom, if the equatorial bond is down, on the adjacent carbons, the E bond should be slightly moving up. If you follow these precautions, you will clearly appreciate and even visualize my cyclohexane molecule is 100% staggered conformation. Beautiful structure. And once I am telling cyclohexane, don't immediately jump to conclusion of benzene because normally students are very familiar with benzene. But benzene has carbon with a double bond. Here I am talking all single bonds here. Of course, benzene is a very handsome molecule as you are aware of. That we talk 
when the occasion arises. Right now, I want to tell you the following things as a summary. It is only the eclipsed form that helps in cyclization because we have many molecules which are cyclized. We started with butane and we tried to cyclize. And what conformation I am repeating, don't ignore that. It is the eclipsed conformation alone that helps in cyclization. You could somehow cyclize, but what we realize molecule is uh, not getting an advantage. The eclipsed form is frozen. The bond angle is not advantageous. So cyclobutane is not a preferred cyclic form. It may immediately break up to go for n-butane form. Breaking open cycle is easy. If that is the case, more so with the case of cyclopropane, three-membered carbon, which is totally eclipsed and the bond angle is also not good. I am deliberately not using technical work. There is a separate technical word for bond angle, separate technical word for eclipse conformer. That we will do later on once we come to cycloalkanes. My interest is to incite interest and curiosity in you again. And secondly, after once we realize butane is not a good case, then we realize logically, suppose if you add one more carbon, does it help us? We got pentane from the cyclopentane. Yes, it was having some flexibility. It is three carbons are going for staggered form. Then some of you must have felt, therefore I followed that instruction. We got one more carbon added. We got hexane, cyclohexane, wherein it was totally staggered, especially in a chair form. Chair form. Because in a chair form, we realized, how do you remember that? On every carbon, we have one E bond and one A bond. We cannot have both A bonds. We cannot have both E bonds. If on a given carbon atom, one is A bond, other is E bond, the next adjacent carbons, if A bond is up, the adjacent carbons, A bond should move down and equatorial bonds need to proportionately move up. Such that we are ensuring it is staggered. How to draw this on paper? Because ultimately, we have to draw everything on paper, which is a two-dimensional representation, I will let you know. And also, because the bonds have become very flexible, along with chair form, we can also expect some more conformations also for cyclohexene. But we'll stop now. And if you have any question, please do not hesitate. Post it in the comment section. I will definitely answer that as quickly as possible. So see you soon too. Again, thanks a lot.